Earlier in the show, we heard the leader of Coventry City Council, John Mutton, say that he thinks the row over the Sky Blues unpaid rent at the RICO is reaching a crisis point. I think the board of ACL have now um, just about reached the end of their tether. And they've already uh, taken legal action um, in the past. Uh, that, and they won that legal action. CISO haven't paid any of the money outstanding. I wouldn't be at all surprised if um, further legal action isn't taken in the near future unless an arrangement can be reached. Mm -hmm. That's Coventry City Council leader John Mutton. The club says he can't afford the rent it's been charged and has hinted that it's uh, close to administration. Uh, the stadium's owners, ACL, have said negotiations have broken down and a winding up order in the courts could be their next step. Yesterday, the issue was debated by MPs at Westminster and the sports minister, Hugh Robertson, voiced his views on how the Sky Blues were being run. I would very much like to place on the record my sympathy to the fans uh, of his football club, Coventry Football Club, uh, for, the, for the position in which they have been put and the way this has come about. Uh, I don't think anybody who cares about football clubs or sport in general could find the series of events that he has outlined today uh, in any way satisfactory. Indeed, I think almost everybody would conclude that that is a disastrous way uh, to run a sports club uh, by anybody's judgment. Now, what can a debate at Westminster Hall achieve? I mean, let's go back to the basics and say, what is a debate at Westminster Hall? Let's talk to Andy McSmith, who's a political writer for The Independent and can help us make some sense of this. Thanks for your time, Andy, this morning. Good morning, yes. A, a debate at Westminster Hall, is that is that the same and does that carry the same weight as a debate in the House of Commons or not? Not quite, no. Uh, this is a relatively new innovation. Uh, 20 years ago, you didn't have debates in Westminster Hall. Um, they have got one great advantage, which, uh, which they share with the debates in the uh, House of Commons, in that the libel laws don't apply in there. So uh, an MP who wants to get something off his chest can say it without fear of being sued, and if you're in there and report it, you don't risk being sued if you report what they say. But it, it, it's not a place where the government can go to pass legislation. They don't hold votes. Um, and what these debates do is they get something aired and they get it put into the official parliamentary record, but no decisions are taken in there. Very frustrating to watch. I don't know if you saw the, the particular debate yesterday. It was about half an hour in length. I don't know whether that's, that's average or not. Well, that's, that's normal, yeah. Um, and, I mean, at a pedestrian rate is, is an understatement. You kind of at one point there was uh, an MP stood up just to, just to say that he was a Huddersfield fan. And, and you know, you kind of think, well, hang, where does that go with the, with the whole of the debate? But at the end of it, um, you kind of felt with a sense of, OK, so what happens next? And I guess the answer is very little, isn't it? Uh, I'm afraid that's true most of the time. I mean, sometimes uh, a, a, an MP can push something so hard in there that, that the government starts to get anxious and then the government business managers, managers think we better put this, do something about this in the main chamber. Mm. And once it gets in there, then it starts to get serious. So it, it's a way of getting things publicised, but no, it's not, it's not a part of a decision-making process. I, I did feel uh, at the end of it that it was a half, half an hour of my life I'd never get back, so you're kind of saying that, that is the case. I wish I'd have spoken to you before I watched it. What was really frustrating and really worrying, uh, some would say, you know, if you're, if you're a casual observer of democracy, to see this in action, what was really worrying was that the three MPs, three local MPs were lined up there, uh, and one of them was, was desperately trying to get the sports minister to make some kind of assurance for intervention and despite the fact he kept saying well i'll do it i'll do anything i can and they said well come and help well i can't do that and you kind of realize the 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 level of frustration that you have in this kind of thing there must be a better way to do business wasn't there well th there is a better way of doing business which is that uh, in the main chamber you get uh, uh, periodically the, the, the ministers from the department of culture who include the sports minister have to go in there and they have to answer the questions that are put to them so the sports minister wouldn't have any choice but to get up and replies to questions. The trouble is the, there the, in the Westminster Hall the rules are different. The minister comes along out of courtesy and they will usually make a speech but it's usually something that's been written for them by the civil servants. The last thing they want to do is to make policy there because they haven't got their instructions from back at headquarters. Uh, why would an MP want to bring it up in in in, uh, in the Westminster Hall as, as opposed to uh, 
uh, the main chamber. Uh, Bob Ainsworth is the MP who brought it up, and he won't join us on the show to tell us, so I can't ask him. Any thoughts on why he would do that? Well, I, I don't know, but I suspect he probably tried to get us into the main chamber, but there's huge competition to get it, anything raised in there. Uh, he probably couldn't, so he thought, right, well, I'll go for Westminster Hall, that's the next best thing. And it's, it's easier to get in there because for the all the reasons you've just uh, talked about. Andy, thanks so much for joining us. You've uh, you've made that really, uh, really clear. We understand now uh, exactly what we're talking about. Andy McSmith there, political writer uh, with The Independent.